wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the world. In the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. Chris Voss here from thechrisvossshow.com. The Chris Voss Show. Dot com. Hey, we're coming here with another great podcast. We certainly appreciate you guys tuning in. This is a very special podcast. We seem to be doing it every year for the last few years. It's kind of an annual tradition. We have this gentleman on. His name is Gary Shapiro. You probably heard of him or seen him, or if you're in the tech trade like we are, uh, you know him extremely well. And this episode is brought to you by IFI Audio and their new Neo IDSD. The Neo is the new wave of digital sound listening for your desktop, music, gaming, and bleeding edge Bluetooth, even MQA audio file decoding. Uh, we're using it in the studio right now. I've loved my experience with it so far. It just makes everything sound so much more richer and better and takes things to the next level. IFI Audio is an award winning audio tech company with one aim in mind to improve your music enjoyment of quality sound, eradicate noise distortion, and hiss from your listening experience. Check out their new incredible lineup of DACs and audio enhancement devices at ifi-audio.com. Gary is the president and CEO of the Consumer Technology Association, the U.S. Trade Association, representing more than 2,200 consumer technology companies, which owns and produces this CES show. You may know what that is and what that's about. It's one of the largest shows ever. It's virtual this year. The Global Stage for Innovation. He is also the author of best-selling books like Ninja Future, Secrets to Success in the New World of Innovation, and several other books. Uh, it's CES time. Welcome to the show, Gary. How are you? Chris, I feel like it's CES time because you're interviewing me. That makes it real. It's that time of year, folks. The CES show. I, clearly, i never going to make a wrestling announcer thing. Well, welcome, Gary. It's wonderful to have you on. And uh, CES show time. It's that time of year. My feet are already starting to hurt, but I guess they won't this year because it's all digital. Tell us about the show and what's happening this year. Well, obviously it's a different year it's a different event and we had to change um and i have to be honest since i know your las vegas following is strong is that the toughest thing about the decision was really our friends in las vegas the the, the people that run everything the workers the hotels the drivers the the union labor everyone who's who just makes ces phenomenal and, and las vegas the best destination in the world we felt we were letting them down especially because we made an announcement early we decided to to we decided in july we kind of knew what direction we we're going in march we made it formal in july and we wanted to tell everyone right away so they could plan around it and i know people were looking forward to the ces like 2021 starting everything anew but we felt very strongly that the uh, there wouldn't be a widely available vaccine that, that allowed us to be safe. And we wanted to be part of the solution, not the problem. So, you know, a lot of people questioned why we were making the decision then. But a lot of people were also grateful that they they could plan for it. And, and, and it and requires a lot of planning, quite a total mental shift for us. And this is the advantage is this is an aberration year. Uh, of course, we hope knock wood. It's something where this is the one time only event where it's digital only 2022. We want to be back in Las Vegas. We plan to be back in Las Vegas. We've signed up several hundred companies to be back in Las Vegas already. Uh, first week in January. And uh, we're very excited about being there for so many different reasons. Um, and we'll have a hybrid event. What we what we want to do is we want to learn from what we do in 2021, what, what are the best aspects of digital? And there are some great things about digital, especially being purely digital, that we're taking advantage of fully. One is we could go out to everyone in the world who always wanted to go to the CES, but for whatever reason, they couldn't come. And if they're connected with the industry, we're obviously letting them in in some ways if they have a business purpose for being there. It's still not a public event. We will make uh, the keynotes available on social media so people could see them. Uh, but the hundreds of hours of conferences, the uh, visiting with exhibitors, things like that will be restricted for trade. And we're get, trying to get people to register early so we could make sure people are qualified. If you register the last minute, it would cost a lot more. And also it could mean a delay. So that's what our message is of 
this podcast of anything is to get it out there and go early. So it's uh, it's totally different. We had to change our mindset. In fact, one of the things we were able to do that was actually pleasant, we never would consider doing otherwise, is we were able to change the dates of the show. So it was the second week in January. We brought another week's time. We were concerned a lot of it. This is a, this is almost a TV production for a lot of exhibitors and for us. And it requires a lot of post-production work. We're very sensitive to the holiday season. We don't want to ruin it for people. It's one of the complaints we get about CES from our exhibitors. But you know, the advantage of, of shows, frankly, is they are a deadline and things get done because of them. It's like people hate meetings, but you know, the truth is when you have a meeting, you have to prepare for it and you do get things done. It's like a test in school. You have to, you have to do your work sometime and finish it. You can't make the great be the enemy of the good. So this is very different for us. We decided to invest heavily in it. Uh, we felt that the existing platforms out there where avatars went from booth to booth in a physical, ren you know, a digital rendition of physical space wasn't what we envisioned and wasn't what we wanted. We wanted to break the mold. So we, we looked at every possible package out there and we decided to go with um, something that hadn't been done before is Microsoft because they were doing their own events and we noticed they were doing them really well. Plus they had uh, their own um, Zoom-like service, Microsoft. Uh, teams, which has a lot of advantages. And also we were using it and liked it. And they also have cybersecurity. They have a huge production facility in Redmond, Washington. They've been a partner of ours or a customer of ours or a member of ours. They've been, you know, Bill Gates was keynoting every year at our show as of other Microsoft people. So we said, let's do this and let's do it right. And that's what we've invested heavily in. We've cut back everything else. Obviously this year is a big financial challenge for us without our physical CES. Um, you know, we have fewer employees now. We've cut back a lot of different ways. We're hurting as well. I want Las Vegas to know that. Uh, that's something that's uh, just real for a lot of us right now. But you make the investments we make, and we've made them in this digital event, and we made them coming back to 2022 to Las Vegas. This sounds pretty cool. Uh, we'll have the link on the Chris Voss show so that people can click on to sign up. What's the link that they can take and go to? Uh, the link for CES, CES.TECH, CES.TECH, CES.Tech. That's where you can go. Thanks for asking. I should have known that right away. I should always be saying that. CES. You know, <laughs> well, you guys, you guys have a few different things you do with CTA and the CES. So there you go. Right. Um, this is really cool. And, and it was really, and like you say, it was really sad this year because they built this beautiful new convention center pretty much just for you guys. And uh, and it sits empty, uh, which is no fault of anyone's, but uh, coronavirus, I suppose. But well, it uh, wasn't just for us. I mean, everyone's excited about. I, it. And, you know, <laughs> Las Vegas has had some great leadership for the years with Rossi Rollincutter, and now there's uh, certainly there's some great new leadership in there. Well, it's not new anymore, but we think Las Vegas is the best run convention city in the world. It has. Las Vegas has more hotel rooms than any city in the world, or at least any city in the Americas we can identify. Uh, and it has three of the 10 largest convention centers in the country. And it has just uh, a delightful group of employee, you know, people that work there. And we try to give back to Las Vegas every year and every way we can. So I think this is awesome. You guys are doing virtual. And I'm glad you're bringing it back hard next year because I actually have a bet with someone for a dollar. It's the old uh, Eddie Murphy uh, uh, movie, if you saw it. With the, oh, by uh, one of my favorite, rich guys. 48 hours, yeah. Yeah, I lost a dollar this year. I'm getting a dollar for 2022 because I have you confirmed you guys are doing a real show. But I like the idea that, that hopefully this will bring you guys some maybe some new people who maybe could have come or wanted to see what CES is so they can get involved. What are some of the highlights or features that you're doing in the show, maybe keynotes or things that you, you think are really going to stand out? Well, we have incredible keynotes from the CEOs of Verizon, AMD, GM, uh, we just announced that the, uh, the the woman who heads Warner, who made the Time Warner, who made the decision to bypass movie theaters essentially for Windows and go direct to home for 2021. She's been in the news all over lately. She'll be speaking. Uh, we have a, a, a large uh, group of major CEOs, including the CEO of Best Buy, and we have a lot of announcements coming. Uh, the, what's different is that some of the the talks, the conferences will be shorter, so people will appreciate them. The companies that are doing things will be very careful to uh, produce well-produced, interesting uh, video renditions. But the unique opportunities of this event are that people can sign up, state their preferences, they can connect with one another before the show if, they're, if you're willing to give up your name and be out there, kind of a CES LinkedIn, if you will. Um, and also, it's not only for the few days of the show. 
uh, January 11th and 12th. It goes for another 30 days beyond that. So oh, you can wow. still connect with exhibitors. You can chat with exhibitors. Uh, we'll have a live anchor desk for uh, three days, uh, the press day and the two days that follow for CES, where we have uh, people with big social media influence and professional anchors actually talking about what's hot, what's not. We have our Innovations Award winners that will be featured. We have, you know, we'll have really a lot of live guests. And let's be honest, one of the great advantages of this is you can get incredible people to, to speak because you're not asking them to, to fly, you know, across the country and they can do it from the comfort of their home. So we're, we'll be having some lively interviews and, and we have some great panel sessions on all, a lot of the key technologies. And of course, there's so much out there that's changed because of COVID. It's not only tele, uh, healthcare and technology and innovation and telehealth and how doctors see patients. It's also how we education, how kids are, are changing. It's mobility. People are looking now and more seriously at self-driving cars. Electric cars will be a big focus. Smart cities and resilience. Someone we've been talking about and having exhibits focused on for years. Everyone's talking about resilience now. It's the word of the year. I said it would be the word of the year three years ago after we had a, our own board meeting in the middle of the fires in Napa Valley. Literally, we smoke around us and no electricity, no phones, no coffee. Uh, we had one right after the Las Vegas shootings when we heard from the top people in Las Vegas uh, in security because we were focusing on, on some important things for our show. Uh, but that resilience is big now. And we're seeing in product categories, we're seeing how people are building differently. We're seeing how people are going to be living differently. With work from home, people are investing in their, their office space, but they also could work anywhere, and that changes where they'll live. So we expect major changes in society, and the companies that are successful are the ones that adapt, and they innovate, and there'll be a lot of products focused on not necessarily COVID itself, but the results of how COVID is changing our lifestyle. And it goes into you know, trends of energy efficiency. It goes into trends of mobility. Obviously, electric bikes is a new category we're actually starting to cover uh, with our own research. And what we're doing, uh, we're seeing things that we're seeing great trends out there and things like buds, video games, uh, other things are happening quickly. Anything for the home is very hot right now. Uh, it's, it's been a, you know, 2020 was a pretty horrible year for just about everyone. But a lot of companies did well because they were selling to the home marketplace and they adapted. And all of a sudden things like cameras and uh, headphones and buds and all sorts of products that are really, really hot. And mobility is a big deal. And, uh, automobiles, people want cars. They like their own little private machine, private machine more than they would. I hate to say it, if you're a public transportation advocate, this probably isn't your finest year because people are staying away from uh, public transportation. Or if you're selling office space, I mean, that's, that's a reality. So a lot has changed. I mean, this is the most dramatic change in year possible. It's not only the horror of COVID, it's all the changes in lifestyle it's caused, but it's also the advancements in technology, in healthcare, in education, in how we work at our jobs. Everything has changed. And that's, the CES will reflect that. This is the thing I love about CES is because there's always the people that are showing up there on the cutting edges of the changes that are going on in our world. And like you say, this has been quite extraordinary. Uh, but I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people going to the show that that are bringing those new ideas and those new things. And and I don't know, you know, how much we're going to change in the future. I'm really excited that you're going to have uh, like the materials and the speakers and stuff available 30 days. That just really makes me excited right now because one of my hardest problems is Every year I go to CS, I'm like, I'm going to see everything. And I try and I try so hard using my body, my feet give out first. <laughs> but this is going to be exciting that, that I can delve into this and we can have actually 30 days of CS. I love it. it, it yeah, I, I'm excited too because I never get to see CES actually. And I, I'll be able to, to see parts of it and go to different exhibit booths. And, and it, I'm, I'm pretty pumped myself, honestly. I think it's fantastic. And it's an opportunity that we'll never have again, I hope. Um, to, to do it this way, because we're not talking about how we're planning our physical walks and trying to have your meetings all in the same area and then the other area. And of course, we are still having that press day, Chris, January 11th, where the press conferences for journalists like yourself, uh, where we have over 20 different companies, you know, rolling out some really cool stuff. Many of them will be taking questions and answers afterwards. So it's, it's pretty exciting. Plus, I'll get to do it in my underwear. So uh, no. that's, uh, TMI. <laughs> I, I, don't want that I don't know. You know, it's so uh, it's, it's the zoom world. Yeah. Everybody. The, uh, so it'll be fun. It'll be fun to, it'll be fun to see everything and be able to take it in and be able to follow up on stuff. Cause I, I gotta tell you that 
that you know it, you guys are uh, january 11th through 14th next year uh but having access to all that stuff where you're like you know i always do these shows to people like hey did you see that one keynote i'm like oh man i missed it i you know i i just was wiped out i or you know whatever i was i had my other meetings and stuff and this is going to be fun that it's this way and i like how next year maybe you guys are doing a little bit of both but i i do love you guys are coming back physically because because i i i just love the physical fun of cs going booth to booth you feel like you're you feel like you're a little kid going to a toy store and you're like ooh, what do you have and it's just that whole toy store sort of experience is absolutely know, fun for me and well, I agree, people. Chris. I mean, one thing that COVID has taught, I think, everyone is that we, as human beings, we need each other. We want to be with each other. Yeah. And like, this is like something's missing in all our lives right now. Of, you know, that five cents physical encounter. The, you know, I don't know if CS 2022 will be back with hugs and handshakes. Uh, you know, we may still, many of us, if not all of us, will maybe wearing masks. We'll see. You know, we want to have the best practices, obviously. Hopefully, most people will be vaccinated or have immunity and, and you know we'll, we'll figure it out because we were we were planning in like march for like how we would do it we've looked at a lot of things uh thankfully like I, i'm not worried about that for 21 right now <laughs> <laughs> i want to just make sure that you know people are having a great experience on the on their on their trip to our, our virtual events so that's important to us and this is going to be fun. I, I, I'm really excited that you guys are making it longer. I am exciting. Are you going to keep uh, in 2022, keep it around January 11th through the 14th? It'll be, uh, sorry, it's, I think it's January 5th through the 8th, I believe. Okay. Uh, All right. So that, the advantage of going digital is we could change the dates uh, without dealing with, you know, the three convention centers and 20 hotels and asking them <laughs> and begging them. That's not... <laughs> The ability to change dates is not something that's going to happen in the physical world again, <laughs> hopefully. Uh, so we'll, we're pretty booked in Las Vegas through the 2030s. There you go. Yeah, that, that's probably a smart thing to do, considering, you know, uh, get that pre booking. <laughs> you probably get better rates that way. <laughs> uh, I wish that was. I good to do. <laughs> They're like, wait, is CS on the phone? Charge them double. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so, anyway, as we go out, uh, Gary, any last uh, pitch you want to do for the uh, big show? Yeah, the, the pitch is, for, is, is, if you remember the trade, just, you know, and you connect it somehow with the industry. And obviously, you are as a journalist and people in technology and innovation are is to register early. Uh, the experience the last few months of these digital events that are much smaller than ours have had is that people register in the last two or three days. We qualify everyone. You really, we're preserving that. If you want to just watch the keynotes and you're a consumer, it'll be on social media. You know, we're talking to the various platforms about how to do that best. But if you want to delve into it and you have a business reason, register now. You can get your preferences out there if you want to put your name out there other people can contact you as well or you can contact other people ahead of time you can plan ahead you could if you say like all you have to do is check boxes about what you're interested in and, and they'll you know you'll you'll be shown what conference sessions there will be a personalized experience what exhibitors are relevant to you and identifying themselves you'll get a lot of push messages that way so it's definitely worth it to register early and if you wait till the end you're talking we made it very expensive intentionally so people oh. register early because we cannot deal with people who register the last day and qualify them. We just don't have the ability to, to deal with 10,000 people, 20,000 people coming in the last day. It's something similar to what we did at the physical event. If you register, if you, if you show up on site in Las Vegas, you'd have to pay $300. And that's how we help control that line. Um, but that's, it's just, just plan ahead. It's, it's quick to register. We've gotten great feedback. It's an easy process. Um, and so go ahead and do it. There you go, guys. Sign up. Uh, give us the dot .com again, if you will. Well, it's a dot .tech, I guess. Yes, dot .tech, T-E-C-H. Really there you go. Online. Sign up, guys. Get in early and everything else. It's going to be the big show. I love that you're you're making all that material available because I'm going to be soaking in it for 30 days, probably promoting it, tweeting it out, talking about it. The You know, the big mouth that I have, I'll probably never shut up. People will be really sick of me at the CES at the end of 30 days. Yes, probably, I think but... people are welcoming to talk about something besides politics. There you and, go. And covid so I think COVID, yeah. happily fill that gaping hole. Uh, I can't wait to get to a show. Like, I think, I think once we get everybody inoculated or whatever vaccine and stuff, 
I think people are going to be, want to be, they're going to flood restaurants. They're going to flood shows. We're just going to be like, hey, man, we've been stuck in our house for a year. We're getting the hell out of here, and we are going to things, because I know free I will. Free the prisoners, man. Free the, yeah. free the prisoners, the COVID prisoners. The COVID prisoners. I, I mean, I, I would be so happy just to go to my first show, and and it will probably be CS at the pace we're going, and, and I'll be like, I'll be like, oh, my God, I'm never going home again. Don't take me back, please. So it'll be awesome. This is great. I'm, I'm, I, I just appreciate you coming on the show every year and sharing it with us, uh, Gary. Thank you much, for, uh, very much for coming on. Thanks, Chris. You stay healthy and safe and have a great holiday and a, a wonderful 2021. I will. And to my audience, be sure to tune in uh, to the show uh, on YouTube.com. You watch the video version of us at YouTube.com, Fortress, uh, Chris Voss. We also have a CES uh, group. You can, uh, it's CES Show uh, 2020, I think, 2021. I think group it is on Facebook.com. You can see it over there. And if you're uh, exhibiting, come in there and uh, promote your stuff. Thanks to Gary for being with us. Uh, thanks to CTA and CES Show. Thanks to my audience for tuning in. Stay safe, wear your mask, and we'll see you next time.